Sarah here from smallbusinesssarah.com, where I help online small business owners get a handle on their accounting, bookkeeping, and taxes. Today, we're going to be talking about recording inventory and cost of goods sold in your QuickBooks bookkeeping records. So let's go ahead and get started. Please keep in mind that my advice is for small business owners often selling on platforms such as Etsy, Shopify, eBay, or Amazon. This advice is not applicable to the larger business owner. And as with all of my content, it's for informational purposes only. So check with your accountant for advice that is specific and tailored to you. My method for handling inventory purchases is not the only method. There are other options available, so keep that in mind. You may need to dig into other options to find the right one for you. Just because I'm suggesting this does not mean that it's the only way to go. Overall, my bookkeeping mindset is to make it as accurate, easy, and fast as possible. That way you'll actually keep up with your bookkeeping and you won't just ignore it. If bookkeeping becomes too manual or cumbersome, then people just tend to give up. So that's why my method for recording shop revenues and expenses often relies on a monthly journal entry and summary method because it's accurate, easy, and fast. It's also not expensive. So here's what I do with inventory purchases for my e-commerce clients. I recommend that purchases of raw materials or products for resale be categorized directly to the cost of goods sold category rather than recording those purchases directly to inventory. If you are using separate financial accounts for your business and these are linked to your QuickBooks bookkeeping account, then you will see these purchases come through your bank feed. Simply select the expense add your vendor, and categorize those purchases directly to cost of goods sold. Super easy, super fast. So this method functions on the cash basis of accounting, the basis of accounting that most small business owners use. On the cash basis of accounting, expenses are recorded when money is spent. The IRS allows for small business owners to elect the cash basis of accounting if your average revenues over the last three years were less than a million dollars. For most of us, that is not hard to stay under that IRS running average of revenue. At the end of the year, you will need to do an end of year inventory count to adjust your cost of goods sold figure for tax purposes. This end of year inventory count must be done by every business owner, regardless of how you categorize your inventory purchases throughout the year. So what's the alternative to categorizing inventory purchases or raw materials directly to cost of goods sold? So that's what I'm recommending. When you purchase raw materials or purchase items for resale, you categorize directly to cost of goods sold. The alternative is to categorize inventory and raw materials purchases directly to inventory. Then you need to adjust your inventory balance for every item you sell. To do that, you would decrease your inventory and increase the cost of goods sold when you make a sale. This method is consistent with the accrual basis of accounting. Keeping track of inventory via this method becomes cumbersome, or it can, especially for handmade sellers. Imagine trying to determine the cost of inventory in each handmade necklace you sell and then adjusting your bookkeeping records accordingly. It could easily become an administrative nightmare and you still would need to do an end of year inventory count at year end because every business has to do that. Every business that has inventory that is. Keeping track of inventory in your bookkeeping records on the accrual basis of accounting does get a little bit easier if you are a product seller. It may be possible to use summary reports of inventory sold and adjust inventory and cost of goods sold balances that way. However, it's gonna cost you a little bit more to have a higher level of QuickBooks that can track inventory. In addition, on certain platforms, you have to pay more per month for access to reports of sales by product. 
There are apps and integrations, of course, that can help with inventory management within QuickBooks, but once again, they can cost a lot of money. So you can see how easily your small business bookkeeping has just become much more expensive and much more time consuming. If inventory management is a concern, knowing how much you have on hand at any given time, most of the platforms you sell on are gonna tell you how much of each inventory item you have on hand at any given time. So Shopify can do that, Amazon can do that, Etsy can do that. So that will allow you to track when to buy more products or to determine how much you have in stock simply by using those features of the inventory on hand inventory in stock within those platforms. So most of the time that level of inventory management is enough for the average small business owner. And there's no need to translate that inventory on hand information into your accounting records. That's when things get more cumbersome and more expensive. And so that's why I just recommend categorizing directly to cost of goods sold rather than categorizing to inventory. So I've been talking about the pros of not keeping an inventory balance in your bookkeeping records and instead categorizing all inventory and raw materials purchases directly to cost of goods sold. However, there is one drawback of this method your overall profitability in your accounting reports will be skewed at any one point in time. So to explain what I mean, if you purchase a large amount of inventory in October, ahead of the Christmas season, and you categorize that to cost of goods sold, the net income for the month of October will look quite low. In reality, that purchase was for inventory that you will sell over the next three months. So your net income for the last quarter of the year will be much more reflective of your actual income than just looking at one month at a time. So that's if you go with the method of categorizing directly to cost of goods sold. One month of your profit and loss will look slightly skewed, but over time it balances out. So that's why once again, let me reiterate, my method is most ideal for small business owners, and it may not be the right solution for you. If you're a larger business and you really need to see on a granular level your net income extremely accurately at any given point in time, then you need a more sophisticated system. You need to be tracking your inventory value within your bookkeeping records. However, many of you are super small business owners. You've just opened your first Etsy shop, just started selling on Amazon, just started selling on Shopify, and you need fast and inexpensive solutions. And for you, this method that I'm recommending might be the right one, where you categorize directly to cost of goods sold, and then you do your end of year inventory count for tax purposes. I believe in simple bookkeeping, which allows business owners to accurately track their revenues and expenses without spending too much time on their bookkeeping every month or too much money. So that's why my methods often come up with ways to do bookkeeping that focus on accurate yet quick and easy results that don't require the use of expensive apps. Because when you first get started, every penny counts. And spending your money on bookkeeping, apps, and higher levels of programs just probably isn't the way you want to be spending your money. Tracking the balance of inventory in your bookkeeping records can get complicated and time-consuming, and it may not be something you need to do, especially when you're first starting out. So regardless of your inventory tracking choices throughout the year, though, the IRS still requires you to perform an end-of-year inventory count of products you have on hand. So whether you categorize directly to cost of goods sold, you have to do the end-of-year inventory count, or if you're categorizing to inventory with the accrual method and you're adjusting for each sale that you make, guess what? You still have to do the end-of-year inventory count. You don't get out of that even if you have been tracking the value of inventory you have on hand within your bookkeeping records throughout the month. That's why even large stores, you'll see them doing their end of year inventory count where they've got tags on all the shelves and things like that. It can be helpful to have a list of products that you purchased throughout the year 
and the price you paid though. This can help with product reordering throughout the year and it can help with your end of year inventory count. So I created a printable, which you can buy from me in my Etsy shop. I'll have a link in the description. It's just a product tracking template that will help you just record what you purchased, what you paid, and then you can use that same template to count what you have on hand at the end of the year. Just makes things a little bit faster and simpler. Okay, so that's the end of the discussion. That's why I categorize inventory purchases, raw materials purchases, products for resale directly to cost of goods sold because it's a good solution for small business owners that want fast, easy, accurate bookkeeping and don't want to spend a lot of money on extra program features or apps and things like that. It's not the only method. Larger businesses need to be tracking the value of inventory that they have on hand within their bookkeeping records. But I think a lot of people assume that they have to. They assume that they have to be tracking their inventory value within their bookkeeping records, and that's just not true. Categorizing directly your expenses directly to cost of goods sold is a perfectly valid method, and you'll still be recording and reporting accurately to the IRS at the end of the year because you'll do your end of year inventory count. So I hope this has been helpful. If it has, I always appreciate your like and subscribe and just let me know what questions you have in the comments. Have a great day and thanks for watching.